Okay, and welcome back. So I'm going to discuss the difference of squares. I think a good place to start would be to show you how one comes up with the difference of squares. So before I get into the definition, let me just show you something. You've probably seen something that looks like this, right? Okay, so you've seen something that looks like this where they're both binomials are identical, they both have an A and a B in the same order. The only difference is there's a, a plus sign here and a minus sign here. Okay, well let's foil this out and see what happens. We're going to observe what happens here. A times A is A squared. A times B is, well, negative B is going to be negative AB. And now B times A is going to be plus AB. Okay b times a is the same as a times b, so it's just plus a b. And b times negative b is negative b squared. Well, notice how this term here and this term here both cancel out, right? Negative a b plus a b, so negative 1 a b plus 1 a b. There's just nothing. They just cancel out. They zero out. And all you're left with is a squared minus b squared. Okay. Now there's a good place to start. So now let me introduce the basic definition. a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. Now it doesn't have to be in that order. It can be written like this. You can put the minus sign first. So you have a minus b times a plus b. And that's basically the, uh, the idea. Anytime you have a term, okay, like a common in both binomials, okay, so you have an a here and an a here, and you also have a term b, which you have one here and one right here. Anytime they're the same, and the only thing different between the two factors, basically, this binomial and this binomial, is the minus and the plus that uh, separate the terms inside. Okay, that right there is a difference of squares. So, no matter what it is, as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you something here. Let's say, for instance, you were given x minus y times x plus y. Okay, that's going to be x squared minus y squared. Okay, now just bear with me. I'll show you how to do some of these problems, but I need you to understand some of these concepts too. Okay, so let's say, for instance, instead of x minus y, let's say you had x minus 2 and x plus 2. Well this is equal to x squared minus 2 squared which is equal to x squared minus 4. Okay. And now with that said you could take, you can go backwards. You see this x squared minus 4? You can go backwards and write it as x minus 2, x plus 2. Okay. So before I begin, I need you to see this concept first. Let's say, for instance, you had p to the n, q to the n. This can be rewritten as p, q, the quantity to the n. Okay. Now, why am I showing that to you? Because at some point, you're going to get something that looks like this, a squared minus 16 and you want to rewrite the 16 as a square of something. So I'll give you an example. Let's say for instance 16 can be written as 4 squared, right? 9. And these are all typical numbers that you'll get on a test. Okay, if you're if you are looking at this video it's because you needed to get a technique that works every time. And so I've got one that's going to work every time. So 9 can be written as 3 squared. 25 can be written as 5 squared. Okay. Now let's um, let's add something to that 16. Okay. So let's say for instance you see how it has a up here a squared minus 16. At some point you may end up having something that says like 16 b squared. Okay. Okay. So let's just add the b squared to the 16 as we have over here. 16 b squared can be written as 4 squared b squared which can be written as 4b quantity squared. Same with this, 9b squared can be written as 3 squared b squared, which is equal to 3b quantity squared. 
and applying the same idea to the 25, if we have 25b squared, this is written as 5 squared b squared, which is equal to 5b quantity squared. Okay, so let's work on a problem that you guys uh, are, you know, would typically get on a test. So let me clear this out. Let's do this. X squared, we'll keep it really simple, okay? X squared minus 16. Okay. The first thing you want to do is look at your first term. Do I have any coefficients in front of the variables? No. So in this case here, this is real simple. This is just going to be X squared. Now I'm going to put it in parentheses so that way you have a visual guide in doing these problems, okay? And it really does help. Even if it's that simple where it's just, you know, well, just x squared, why can't I just put x squared? Well, you can, but trust me on this. This is a visual guide. Next, bring down the minus sign. And now the 16, what we're going to do is it's going to turn into this, something squared. What times itself is 16? 4. Okay? So now, um, some of you guys like writing in this direction, where you write equals, parentheses, and just set up two parentheses this way. Or some of you prefer to do it like this, going down the way we've been doing. Like this goes down here, that goes down there, that goes down there. So maybe we could just put the parentheses here. It's really up to you. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go down because I can actually fit more spot, more stuff on the screen like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, you see this X right here? It's going to go once in here, once in here. Now, let me say that again. Not just the X, but what's inside the parentheses. I'm going to write it once here, once here, okay? I'm going to say it like that. The 4 is inside this parentheses. I write what's in the parentheses once here and once here. Now, all I do is I write either a minus and a plus, or a plus and a minus. It doesn't matter what order. Some guys, or some people like writing a plus first, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And that's your answer. So we're going to box that. Okay. Now let's do another problem. Uh, what if we have, same idea, but this time all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 4 in front of the x squared. Okay. I'm going to leave this the same way. Okay, this is just to warm you up and just a confidence builder. Uh, I'm gonna, they're going to get progressively harder, okay? But I don't want to make them too difficult where you guys are not being able to do simple problems anymore, okay? So, what we're going to do is this 4, first of all, I look at the first term. Do I have any coefficients in front of the variables? Yeah, I've got a 4. Well, can I write that with a square, as a square of something? Well, 2 times 2 is 2 squared, which is 4, so I can write this as 2 squared. Okay, so this 4 corresponds to that. The x squared, you could just bring it down. Minus sign, you're going to bring it down. And the 16 can be written as 4 squared, like we have over here. Okay, now I'm going to combine these um, factors here, 2 squared and x squared. And I'm going to write them in parentheses, 2x quantity squared. Bring down my minus sign, and this 4, put it in parentheses, and square it. Okay, so now I'm ready to set up my two sets of parentheses. Now, what's inside the parentheses on the first term, you're going to write that down. Here and here. Now, what's in the parentheses on the second term, you're going to write that down here, here. Okay? And then plus and minus, or minus and plus. And if you wanted to check this again, you can go ahead and FOIL. Okay? We're not going to do that. We're just going to keep on moving on.